Now, there's been a lot of discussion in the EU referendum campaign about money. How much do we pay to the EU and what do we get in return? One of the tangible benefits is the subsidies for farming. But the environmentalist and writer and reluctant EU Remainer, George Monbiot, argues that might not be the best use of the funds. Here he is with his soapbox. <laughs> Why is it that the biggest item in the EU's budget is scarcely mentioned in the referendum debate? I'm talking about farm subsidies, the 55 billion euros a year that the European Union doles out to landowners. The more land you own, the more money you receive. Some people are getting millions. It's daylight robbery. The rest of us are being taxed to subsidise the richest people in the land. With a moo moo here, a moo moo there, cattle everywhere. And when those cows got out of line, hamburger medium rare. Even worse, the subsidy rules insist that you must destroy trees and other wildlife if you want the money. There's no limit to the subsidies you can get for owning land. Some landowners use their social security to buy racehorses and private jets. While the benefits for people who need them to make ends meet, ordinary folk, those are capped. Oh, well, At the very least, subsidies for landowners should be capped at the same level as benefits for everyone else. I think I'm going to vote to remain in the EU on the 23rd of June. But if we do stay, let's demand that it stops robbing the poor to give to the rich. And George Monbiot joins us now. And we've also been joined by another George, George Eustace, the farming minister who is campaigning to leave the EU. And I won't muddle them up, I promise. <laughs> George Monbiot, can you get the reform you want while still being in the EU? Well, that's a really good question. And I have to say on this, on this issue, the EU has been unresponsive and unaccountable. It's really, really hard to get them to listen. It's not necessarily the, 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 the European Commission at fault. There's been a deal, a rather dodgy deal, between France on the one hand mm. and Britain and Germany on the other, where France says we want the biggest budget pro possible and mm. Britain in particular has been saying we want no cap on the individual so contribution. So why, why are you staying in? I mean, you've made a very strong mm. case for leaving. Mm. Mm. Because it's not just about agriculture. There's lots of other issues as well. Now, you know, but I think it's dishonest to say because I'm an in-campaigner, or because I'm vaguely for, for, for remaining, I should pretend that everything about the EU is rosy and good. Right. Is that the only reason you're leaving, then, to do with farming? Well, I think we'd be better off taking back control across the piece. But the point I'd make on agriculture, I spent two and a half years wrestling with the sort of regulations that uh, George has talked about. And the trouble is you can't really get proper reform in the European Union. You've got 28 governments, all with difficult politi different political persuasions, all with different agricultural sectors structured differently. The, the truth is that the, the fundamentally the idea of a pan-European legal system that tries to govern agriculture is just flawed. And that is why we need to uh, get rid of that and go back to putting in place our own uh, agricultural policy so that we can design something much more sensible, much more holistic. You know, the environment's incredibly mm. complex, and that's why you need the flexibility to be able to do things differently. Right, but what about the subsidies that farmers would lose? Well, they wouldn't lose them. I've been very clear that we would still support farming at the same level, but we would spend money... You say you've been clear, but would you be able to guarantee that level of, of, of money? Well, I can guarantee that if we stop sending £350 million pounds a week right, to Brussels... we've already had the discussion, of course. Let's talk about the course, net figures well, no, the point is this. The point I'd make is this. You know, we would have more than enough money to fund an agricultural policy. If it's not the priority was sorry. towards farming and agriculture. Well, no, 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 but and the environment as well. This and the environment and animal welfare. There so are other objectives... Hang on a second, deliver. Douglas. So we're spending over three billion a year in this country on farming, recycled through the EU and paid back to, well, to landowners. We call it to farming. It's actually just being paid for owning land. That's what you get the subsidy for, the pri primary subsidy. And to say 
Yeah, we're facing a shortfall, an annual shortfall in the NHS of roughly three billion. Mm. We're going to give it to landowners instead of um, instead of d dealing with the shortfall in the NHS. No one's going to stand for that. The only reason why the subsidy system exists is that we can say, oh, that's all Brussels' business. I don't agree with that. Actually, we would be delivering environmental objectives, and the crucial thing is which is which, which, which one? Well, agriculture policy delivers a number of things. First of all, it helps to safeguard our food security, and I'm in favour of looking at some of the insurance models they've got in Canada to help farmers mitigate risk so that they have the confidence to invest. But secondly, you could put in place a whole suite uh, of different environmental schemes to have catchment sensitive farming, to protect our water courses, to promote habitats. We could do it far better than the clunky system that we've got now. This is all the stuff you've been trying to scrap while you've been Agriculture Minister and I've seen the That's speeches you've given. That's not what I'm trying to scrap, no, no, I'm trying I, to reform. Wait a minute, George. I've seen the speeches you've given where you've said we're going to tear down the regulations, we're going to tear down the conditions that you have to meet as a farmer in order to get this money. And just as the ordinary recipients of benefits have had their conditions racked up and racked up until it's extremely difficult to survive on Social Security, under your watch, farmers have had their conditions reduced and reduced. So we're basically giving away the money for nothing. And even when farmers are stripping the soil off the land, are contributing to floods, are wiping out bees, wiping out songbirds, they are still getting their subsidies. Mm. So when you judge you on your record, we find a completely different picture the to the one I, you're trying to paint. The point that I've made is we need to have clarity about what's regulation and enforce that properly, not the kind of system we have now where there's an arbitrary system of rush justice through something but can called... can you deny you some of the claims the made on your record, though? Definitely, in... yes. I mean, we, we've put in place, we've got £3 billion over the next five years going into environmental stewardship, and I'm saying that we would retain that kind of pillar two activity that promotes but, the development but of habitat... But what about the claims that farmers have contributed to flooding and they've done it because they felt they had to or they didn't have the money or support to do anything else well they've done it because the design of the common agricultural policy is so bonkers frankly and you know George you himself will understand this it? we, we have we have rules I do oppose this order we have rules I've never heard you make dictate... a single public statement I will, I will, all the time this is what's wrong with the, with the current all of the time what's the wrong with the current system, system. for instance control. we have too many we, there are rules that say you can only have a hundred trees per hectare if, in order to make it an el uh, eligible but there are then rules that say what's the, the maximum width of a, the girth mm. of a tree yeah. All yes, sorts of all right, but let's, yeah, let's talk madness. about the subsidy issue, because if it's going to landowners, why should landowners continue to be subsidised by taxpayers here or, you know, anywhere in the EU if farmers aren't getting that money? Why do they deserve a leg up? Well, because we'd be sub... in future, if you change it the way well, I want now. to. Well, now. Well, no, at the moment, it's not right, because there is, it is true that there are large landowners who, George says, are not uh, often farming, some of them receiving payments of over half a million pounds a year, one or two actually receiving payments of over... And you minute. guarantee they wouldn't get that anymore? Uh, I'm guaranteeing we'll change the system so that you, first of all, help farmers manage risk through government-backed insurance schemes. And secondly, so that you reward farmers for doing genuine work for the environment, not giving them a subsidy and then trying to retrospectively justify it through this cross-compliance Well, doesn't that sound reward like it would them solve them one of your complaints, then, that actually wealthy landowners wouldn't be getting a subsidy to fly and land their helicopters? W would you cap the level of subsidies that any one person could get at the same level that ordinary recipients of benefits are capped? I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for it that way, because if you've got somebody who's got several hundred acres in there, and, you know, some of the, the best work we do is the higher level stewardship work, where we're actually really investing in habitats, that's mm. really successful. Um, but it, but look, it's this question, I would not it. just be giving, it wouldn't be a subsidy anymore, it would be a payment for ecosystem services, a payment for work to improve water quality, to promote habitats. Farming is unique in that it's, it's, it's intrinsically entwined with our, our natural landscape, our natural environment, that's why it's different, that is why you do need public support for those those public goods which actually you can't reward in the marketplace always. And you do accept we need a farming industry or not? We do, yes. And uh, what George is suggesting would certainly be an improvement if we could trust him that that's what we're going to end up with. Well, but the trouble is that everything we've been hearing from him on environmental regulations is reduce, reduce, reduce. Let's slash them. Let's get these things out of the way. They're stifling enterprise. Uh, I, what was it? Soul destroying? Spirit wrecking? Spirit crushing. And they Spirit are. Crushing, I, I've spent two and a half years doing this. this is well, what then why defends. should we trust you well, then to actually put they're spirit, that would they're, spirit the crushing. they're spirit crushing because they don't work. Uh, we are forced sometimes to they're spend spirit crushing tens because of they no, no, no. prevent the farmers who you, they, you they seem to regard us. yourself as, as being solely in charge of helping, they prevent them from ripping up the hedgerows, they force us from, to, from, from, uh, from, from destroying. They force the us to do things the wrong way. Us. If we want a coherent uh, environmental policy, we have to deliver it and take oh, right. control. George, we can't just abdicate the, responsibility. Those regulations are all we have to, to fall back on at the moment and to prevent farmers.
farmers. Well, that's because we've abdicated responsibility. Take back control, we'll take back responsibility. Mm -hmm. George and George, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sure you've got a great future together, the two of you, in some sort of double act.